painters. Get yourself a piece of table paper and a piece of white paper. Write your first and last. Here's mine, Mrs. and Mertz. And then maybe something else if I'm feeling a little, like maybe putting something else on there. All right, then we're gonna flip our paper over and we are going to use these palettes here. These are called tempera cake palettes. So we've been working in tempera paint. These are tempera paint, only they're dehydrated. I've poured water in them to get them soaking. And now what I'm gonna do is paint my paper black. So I'm gonna load up some black, put it on my paper. I don't want it to be super black. I wanna have some white, well, not white, but like, you know, I'm gonna have some light areas and some dark areas. All right, so let's pretend that's done. And voila, there we go. You'll notice I don't have white paper showing. I've got it all covered and it's watery. Now this paint is dry right now. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my favorite color. I'm gonna say my favorite color is green. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna work some green in to my brush. And I'm gonna start painting on top of this with the green. And you know what? I think I'm gonna add a little yellow to it. Kind of get it more of a yellowy green. And I'm gonna add some water. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of this white over here and add that to the green. And I'm gonna make a tint of green. And I'm gonna run that up and down the middle. And I think I'm also gonna run it over here. And now I'm putting more just of the color on. Okay, now I'm gonna take the color plus black. the color and if you want to kind of mix it on here you could try that all right oh yeah there is a darker green Now I'm gonna go back to my tinted color, this light green. I'm gonna put more yellow. There we go. Maybe a little light green over here. Just kind of mixing it around. Ooh, that was a little darker than I had wanted. No big deal. No big deal. Now you'll notice that my brush strokes are kind of all going up and down. Do I have to do that? No. If you want them to go this way, I think I'm gonna have some going this way. It's getting a little boring. Hmm, what do I think? I think I'm gonna go with more of the pure green with a little yellow. some lines come in this direction. 
Do you have to go vertical or horizontal? No, you could do some diagonal lines. In fact, I think I'm gonna do some of those right now. I'm very lightly touching my brush. If you want a thin line, you touch it lightly. All right, now I'm gonna get the end of my brush and just like in the non-objective painting, I'm gonna get the end of my brush and I'm gonna put some dots in here. I'm gonna put a field of dots. Just a nice field of dots. Ooh, black looks good on the light. Do I wanna put my dots all over? Not really. Then they won't look special. If I had dots all over the place, They'd be ordinary, not very special, and I want them to be more special. Okay, now I'm gonna take my black, and I think I'm going to draw a horse. And it's okay if it doesn't really look like a horse. This is abstract. taking the image and we're just changing it and that's right what am I drawing with I'm drawing with the end of my brush back here this makes it be not so controlled now maybe you want to use one of the drawings that you did for your how to draws you know, maybe you did a, you know, a whole thing on Patrick. I don't know. You could use that. Just doing some pictures. Now, are these realistic? Oh gosh, no. No, these are not realistic at all. They're just kind of a suggestion. one saying hey where's my other ear I think I'm gonna do another one down here mm, I think I'm gonna do one right here So the difference between abstract and non-objective is that here, it's an abstract picture of a, in this case, horse. Whereas non-objective, there's nothing in there. It's just lines and shapes. You'll notice that these drawings are bigger than my hand. Okay, so don't try to make them little. That would be sad. Now I'm putting a foot down here. Is there, is there a body here? No, not really. And that's okay. That's okay. All right. So now I've got some images of some horses. I've got some green in places. I got light green, dark green. I got some dots. I got some stripes. All right, so I've kind of got a lot going on in here. So what am I gonna do next? Well, I think now I'm gonna let this dry and look at it a little bit later, maybe put some bright white or some darker in it. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing next. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. all right okay so today we have a dry painting okay some of you have pattern on it okay like I've got these stripes here I've got these dots here 
But if you don't have that, because you just didn't get that far yesterday, that's okay. So we're gonna be using these two pencils. This is a charcoal pencil, which is burnt wood, and then they put it in a wood casing, like, because that's a pencil. And this is a white charcoal pencil. And the good thing about charcoal is that you can lay it down and get some detail with it because it's in a pencil form, but then it's a loose material so you can blend it with your finger. So let's say you did not get any <coughs> patterns yesterday. So I could take my charcoal pencil and come in here and put some pretty nice little patterns in here. Just doing a little dotting and it's gonna have a little bit of a squeak to it, which some of you who enjoy annoying people will be like, yes, this is the ultimate annoying tool. Okay, so I'm putting some dots in and let's say you didn't put any pattern in yesterday. So you can hold your pencil under your hand like this and you could like put it in wide like this. Okay, so you can get both teeny tiny details and you can get great big marks as well. So then let's say you didn't draw anything yesterday because you just didn't have time. So then what you can do is go in with your pencil and you can draw some stuff. And even though I drew some stuff while it was wet the other day, it was kind of a gray tone, which Mm -hmm. You know, gray is okay, but it's definitely not black. Put a few ears in here. I'm gonna come back in here. And so this is all, this is the black that I'm doing this with. And I'm not trying to be perfect with this because it's abstract. It's just a suggestion of this animal. And the animal is as big as my hand. Okay, so don't draw it like so your finger can cover it. Draw it big, because little is sad. Okay, so I'm just coming in here, putting in some more detail. And you'll notice that I'm not drawing like this. Okay, I'm not drawing like this. I'm drawing, I have my hand out and I have it, my hand's not even on the paper. Okay, because I want it to be kind of more loose and um, more abstract. Okay, so I can see my horses now better. So now I'm gonna get my white charcoal pencil and I'm gonna come in here and I've got, I'm looking for medium areas. So medium areas that are just kind of like not super exciting. Like this is really light over here. So this is working, this is working through here but then probably kind of right in here, it gets a little washy. And so I'm gonna take my white charcoal and I'm gonna put some white brightness back into it. And you'll notice again, I'm not, I'm not going like this. I've got it like this and I'm keeping it looser. Okay, so. Come in here, add some brightness against my black. All right, and you can do the opposite too. Let's say you've got some grayness somewhere <clears throat> that's like mm, kind of boring. Well, take your black colored pencil or take your black um, charcoal pencil and come in here and really Kind of darken it in and get some of those strong dark pops of darkness that's going to add more excitement to your picture so basically you're just looking where is it light where is it dark could i add more stuff in here to make it more exciting let's see where else here and I think I'm gonna put some lines on this because it's a light and a light which doesn't really do much and I think I'm gonna put some more patterns up here sorry about the squeaky I'll put a dark line through here too 
Okay, now I'm kind of done marking. So now I'm gonna get my fingers going. And you can tell my hands are a little dirty anyway because um, the uh, temper cakes um, kind of, they're not like temper paint. Well, they are temper paint, but they're a little different. So they kind of rub off a little more. So I'm gonna get my finger in here and I'm gonna do some softening. Now, am I rubbing the whole thing? No, because that would just totally make it gray, and gray is what I'm trying to avoid all over. So I'm just gonna lightly, like you're petting a butterfly wing, okay? It's just a light, light kind of, not pushing super hard. Do I wanna do this everywhere? No, I want to just kinda come in and maybe this, maybe one of these fingers is gonna be my white blender. Because if I use my black blender and at the same time for white, it's gonna go gray. And gray is what I'm avoiding. Well, that's a little more exciting, I think. I don't know, what are you guys thinking? Is there anything else I should do? I'm thinking this right here. I don't know. Where's my focal point? Where are you guys looking? That way, in the corner. Kind of down here? Yeah, the corner. This one? Yeah. This one is where your eye's going? Yeah. Am I getting some movement here? Yeah. Am I getting some movement? Oh, I'm staring at the legs. The legs? You go to the legs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about if we I add a, a little more black? So this is part of the process. How about if I have some lines here in the white and these lines say, hey, look right here. This is the main pony of the deal. I know it's so squeaky. How about now? Does that help? Yeah. You think? No? Can you even see it? Mm-hmm. Come on now. That help? Yeah. Should we put some main on this one? Kind of don't like this green through here anyway. So. Okay, so these use these my my um, image is horse, but it's an abstracted version of horse. It's not like a photo of a horse. It's just a sense of a horse. That's an abstraction. Okay. Okay. So thank you for being good listeners, and uh, good luck with what you're doing. There's the mouth. I think I'm gonna keep working on this a little bit. Okay. All right, guys, um, if you need to sharpen these, we're gonna use hand sharpeners because the wood's super um, soft, so.